Hey guys, welcome to another video. So today we'll do another one of those nice questions, um, this time from the four unit syllabus in the integration topic, a nice integration question um, that I got from a past paper. Should be a quick one, not too bad. Let's get started. Um, before I do, do it actually, please subscribe to the channel, like the videos and yeah, tell your friends about this. Um, all right, let's, let's dive right in. So this is from Sydney Grammar. The question looks like this, so uh, I'm a bit too zoomed in. Uh, consider the improper integral, right? Improper integrals are basically when one of the limits uh, is infinity, right? One or more than one of the limits are infinity. Um, in this case, the top limit there, obviously is infinity and not the bottom one. The bottom one is one. Consider that integral. Use a substitution to show that, and then hence solve that. Now, I believe this was the last question in the Sydney Grammar paper for five marks. So, you know, substantial, right? So. And I guess a lot of people, whenever, when you haven't been exposed to an improper integral, even though mathematically it's actually quite uh, straightforward, and they just freeze and then move on and leave it blank, right? So let's have a crack. So part one says, use the substitution u equals to one on x to solve that. Okay. And then hence use it. Not too bad. Let's dive right in. All right. So we have i currently equal to that guy, limit of that, one plus x cubed, all right. Yeah, all right, so once you do that, okay, let's see, it's telling me to use the substitution u equal to one on x, right, where I know du dx equals to, what's that, negative, negative one, bring down negative one x squared, is it? Yeah. That's not too bad, if one x squared, okay, cool. And then if I sort of switch that around, so then dx equals two, what's that? Um, so I cross multiply that, bring the negative over, negative x squared du equal to dx, all right? So I'm gonna plug this guy as part of my substitution and replace this. Now, the limits are fun, all right? So for the limits, you just gotta be careful, right? Cause it's like when, when x, now I won't say equals to when x approaches infinity, right? Then your u should approach, uh, or maybe you can go equals to the limit as x approaches infinity of one on x, which we know is zero, right? That's it. That's really the, 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 the crux of this question, right? That for the limit, you just got to use substitution to replace it with zero. And then when x equals to one, then u equals to one as well, right? And then I just plug these two new limits into here, into here, pretty sweet. Um, and then I go, go about my business, right? So let's see, let's see where this takes me. So it becomes like new limits of zero and one, and then it's minus X squared on one plus X uh, du. Okay. Now it's a problem because it's x squared, but let me simplify it first and then I'll sub in um, the value for you, right? So now, when I ask my students this, a lot of them tell me that their teachers don't tell them, but whenever there's a negative and there's limits, you basically get rid of the negative by flipping the limits, right? That makes sense because when you factorize the negative out, you know, like when you sub in the limits, it's always first minus the second. But if there's a negative in front, it reverses the order. So Smart thing to do algebraically, flip the limit and make it x squared on one plus x cubed du. Now there's two ways to simply, I, I need everything in terms of u, right? Right now I've got x's. There's two things to do. Um, you can either um, simplify now or you can um, come up here, maybe make x a subject as one on u and sub that both into there and there as well, right? Let's see what we get. We get one on u squared over one plus one on u cubed du. I'm hoping this simplifies nicely. So let's common and denominator that on the bottom. So it becomes u cubed plus one on u cubed and on top one on u squared. Do you guys, hopefully you're comfortable to go that guy 
and that guy goes away, and then you comes upstairs. Is that what I want? Perfect. Exactly what I want. You on top, EQ plus one. Do you. Quick check. You. Perfect. All right. So that's how you really attack a an improper um, integral question, right? It's all to do with this sort of highlighted green bit here with the limits, right? Be careful with that. Um, so some teachers might um, inadvertently take, not inadvertently, um, absolutely with intention, take half a mark off if you don't write limit, right? They don't like seeing when X equals to infinity, they like to say approaches, right? So just be very careful with that. All right. Now, hence or otherwise, finish it off with zero to infinity. So part B, part two rather, okay, zero to infinity of the same integral dx. Now, in this question, it's worthwhile highlighting, right? It's all to do with the limits, right? The key is the limits, look at this. In my eye, the limit was from one to infinity. In the question, it's from zero to infinity. So do you think it's a smart idea to split the limit to zero to one, and then one to infinity, and then I can use a bit from above, right? That's probably where they're going with this, right? So maybe split this integral into from zero to one, and then plus one to infinity, and then use the part above, right? I think that's the key. Yeah, because I know that this guy, from what I've prov proven upstairs, so this here, this here, don't touch it yet, even though I, I can technically integrate that. This guy here, let's see. Um, so that is that, so it becomes u. Now, you can easily, just because it's u, you can easily replace it with x, right? It becomes like that x, one plus x cubed dx. Yeah, sweet, all right. Now, oh, sorry. The limits have changed as well. My apologies, because if I'm using it, the limit was was it back to zero? Was it zero, one zero one zero one? Perfect. Because then it aligns the limits between the first fraction and the second one. So just be absolutely clear, guys. Absolutely clear about this, right? This and this, yeah. That's just from part one, yeah. Nothing, I've done nothing but substitute. Oh, sorry, I've done, I've instead of using the letter U, I've just replaced it with the letter X, right? Now, when all the limits are the same and they're both DXs, I'm gonna combine them, all right? Let's put them back together as one integral from zero to one. And then common denominator becomes one plus X TX. All right, that is now a palatable question, right? I say palatable now. <laughs> I get this thing, I get told, this is a 2022 question from Sydney Grammar, right? I get told that you no longer learn how to factorize sum of two cubes, right? Which is one plus X, one minus X plus X squared, right? Which is troubling because you use it quite often, right? <laughs> quite often. So the reason why you do that because then the one plus X cancels out. Yeah to finish off this integral. Nice question, right? Because it sort of leads you down this path. That guy goes away. I like using pink. And then that's the one. And then the question is, guys, you'll have with this question. Even, isn't, even that's not that easy, but if you've been experienced, you probably want to complete the square and see, I'm hoping that it's like something like 10 inverse or something, right? Let's have a look. Zero, one. Guys, x squared minus x. And I'll leave a bit of space. It's a plus one right now. What do I add? Um, add half of that, so I'll add a quarter. And minus a quarter, yeah, perfect. It's just not pretty, but perfect. Um, becomes integral zero to one. X minus half squared plus three on four. Now I have no space. <laughs> um, oh no, no, okay, I have heaps of space. Yeah. All right, guys, tan inverse. All right, let's turn it in front. Okay, so tan inverse will be one on square root of three on two. Tan inverse of X 
over, no, sorry, that's a lie, x minus a half on root three on two with the limits of one and zero. All right, so reciprocate that. Before I sub in maybe times everything by two, just make it, make my life easier, right? So in this fraction here, times everything by two, you get two x minus one on root three, one and zero. I at the very bottom again. Mm. Oh, I got, okay, yeah. <laughs> Let's make the most of this space. So something one, what's that? Two minus one, that's 10 inverse. One on two, uh, one on three, root three, that's nice. And zero would be 10 inverse of negative one on root three. Oh, guys, I'm going to just quickly pop over here. So root three, we know that 10 inverse was that pi on six and negative will be negative, negative pi on six. So two pi on six, pi on three, pi on three, is that right? Two pi on three root three. Quick check, two pi root three. Well, that's right. Yeah, they've just rationalized it. They basically multiply top and bottom by root three as a final answer. Hey guys, short video. Hopefully that was okay. A nice question with improper fractions. Um, you know, hopefully that's okay. If you like that, uh, if you like that question, uh, like the like, like like the video, subscribe to the channel. I'll see you guys at the next lesson. Thank you.